What up, guys? Welcome back to Two Men One Cross podcast. We are happy to see you. Uh, my name is Pete. I am your host. Tyler is my co-host, but he's on vacation with his mom. Damn it! So, uh, so it's gonna be me right here today. Um, all right. So, uh, this podcast is a family-friendly podcast, so everyone can listen to and very welcome to. Uh, we don't do anything inappropriate here, uh, but Tyler can do whatever he wants. So, yeah. Um, anyway. Again, if you uh, like our podcast, don't forget to click like, subscribe, and uh, rate five star. Leave a comment down below. It is on YouTube. Okay, so we love to see you. And um, if you have any question about us, about Tyler in general, um, feel free to ask. Oh, yeah, feel free to ask us. We'll, <laughs> we'll let's see if Tyler is um, are willing to answer. <laughs> get personal, guys. Get personal. So, yeah. Anyway, so um, <clears throat> let's start with a uh, joke of the day. Got a question for you, okay? Why, 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 why do seagulls fly over the sea? You guys know? Why do they fly over the sea? Well, because if they flew over a bay, there would be a bay girl. <laughs> Damn. Okay. All right. Now week three, uh, lab number three. So oxides and hydrates. Uh, we're gonna start it right here. This is uh, what you need to know. Well, oh, you're supposed to know this in the lecture, but I don't think you retain that information. So let's re review real quick together. Okay. All right. If you have your pen, uh, your uh, scratch paper, bring it up. So you have to do some calculation here. Let's just, let's start it right here. Um, Antoine Lavoisier. Um, it's the French chemist and philosopher. I don't know what he, he, he has a lot. Of, he does a lot. He did a lot of things. Uh, proposed a, the law of conservation of mass, which means that the chemical reaction, uh, in the chemical reaction, matter is neither created or destroyed. Uh, what does he mean by that? Well, let's say if you make uh, water from hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, whatever you put in here, the weight of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas will show up in water if, in case there's no leaking. Uh, how much you put in here, you're going to get water in the same mass, right? Four grams of uh, hydrogen gas, 32 grams of oxygen, you're going to get 36 grams. Uh, atoms, molecules cannot be created or destroyed. When, it, when it's here, they are here, right? Okay, that's the law of uh, conservation of mass. And you're going to use this in the lab. I'll give you some examples. So in the lab, you're going to do a combustion reaction. Remember that from last week, All right? So you need a fuel, you need, you need an ox, uh, oxygen, and you need a heat. So the fuel is the magnesium. So you're going to take some amount of magnesium put into a container, the crucible, and you heat it in the open air. So the oxygen is going to come oxidize it. You're going to get a mag uh, magnesium oxide. All right. If I ask you, so at the end, you get a uh, 0.502 grams of magnesium oxide. When you start with 0.301 grams of magnesium, how much? Uh, what is the mass of oxygen that react with magnesium? Well, the law of conservation of mass. So that you can you see that start out with magnesium is a low mass. At the end, you get higher mass. Well, because the oxygen incorporate into magnesium from a com from a compound. Okay, so what's the mass of oxygen? Well, uh, according to law of conservation of mass, mass doesn't go anywhere, right? It's in, it's in the reaction in here. So you can take a, a 0.502 grams of magnesium oxide, subtract by 0.301 grams of magnesium. That's the, uh, uh, the mass of oxygen that reacts, uh, that reacts with magnesium. Okay, all right, now present composition. Right, the percent composition tells you uh, the percent by mass of each element in a compound. Right? For example, right, we're going to go backward this time. So let's say you have 0.502 grams of magne magnesium. You just synthesize it. Right? And uh, you can calculate the percent composition of magnesium and oxygen by doing this. Well, in 0.502 grams, 0.3, about 0.3 grams is magnesium. What is the percentage of that? Well, you're going to take... Uh, the mass of magnesium divided by the overall mass, the whole thing, and then times 100. Yeah. Keep things simple, right? Do the math right there, it's about 60%. Um, let's try on your own, would you? Uh, can you stop the video right here? Calculate the mass of uh, oxygen for me, okay? All right, next one, uh, percent by, no, oh. <laughs> this is a typo. Uh, percent oxygen by mass, not, this is weird, okay? Percent oxygen by mass, uh, so you take the mass of oxygen, divided by the overall mass, 0.502 grams times 100, you should get a, uh, about 
Okay, so in the lab, you will determine the percent uh, composition of magnesium and oxygen in magnesium oxide. You're going to synthesize magnesium oxide and convert, go backward, uh, calculate the percent uh, composition. Okay, so what mass uh, of element or compound you need to weigh or determine to be able to calculate percent composition of magnesium and oxygen? Yeah, think about that. Think about when you read through the procedure, right? When you make a flow chart, uh, what if you want to calculate the percent by mass of magnesium and oxygen, what mass of a compound or element you need to know to allow you to do so? Well, if you want to calculate percent by mass of, uh, of magnesium, you're going to need mass of magnesium. You have to weigh it, right? And then mass of the product at the end, the overall, and then times 100. So you, you need these two. Um, if you want to calculate percent by mass of oxygen, you're going to need the mass of oxygen itself and the mass of the compound times 100. All right, so when you make a flow chart, uh, pay attention on what step that give you these three numbers. You're going to need these three, okay? All right, go over to um, the empirical formula and molecular formula, all right? And in uh, most of students, so in my experience, and even me, when I took the, uh, like a gen chem lecture, um, I, this is like all memorization, and I hate memorization. Let's think about uh, scientists. I'm going to teach you how to think, okay? If you want to uh, uh, determine the molecular formula, let's say for this hydrocarbon, so CXHY, we don't know what's the number. It could be C4H10, it could be C2H5, whatever, right? So if you want to, do, uh, to determine the molecular formula, what do you need? Well, you're going to need moles, X and Y, those are moles, right? In the molecular formula, the number, the subscription, those are moles of each atom, right? So you need to, need, uh, you need to know moles of carbon and moles of hydrogen. And plug in here, you're going to get molecular formula. Well, where, how do we get to moles though? What do we need to calculate for moles? Well, you need, at least you need, a, you need a mass, right? If you know mass of carbon, well, use molecular weight, you can convert it to mole. If you know mass of hydro, uh, hydrogen in here, in this atom, uh, sorry, in this molecule, you can uh, convert that to mole using molecular weight or molar mass, right? Well, what, where do you get mass though? The, the percent composition, which is percent by mass, tells you. You know? L look at the connection right here. So I want you to understand like how we get to the molecular formula. No memorization here. We just go, we just tra trace backward. Well, we need more support to, you need to know X and Y, which, which is more of each atom, each element. And how do you get to more? Well, if you know mass, you can convert it to more with the molecular weight. And um, uh, where do you get the mass from? What well, percent, uh, percent composition, right? Uh, let's take a look. I'll show you and I'll have you do a little bit later, okay? Um, let's say butane is a hydrocarbon with a molar mass of 58.12 uh, gram per mole. Butane has a percent composition of 82.60% carbon and 17.34% hydrogen by mass. What is the molecular formula of butane? Well, <clears throat> first of all, so we have a percent by mass right, of carbon and hydrogen. We have to convert these two to mass of carbon and mass of hydrogen. Let's go through this chart right here. Well, how do you get to from uh, per, uh, uh, percent composition to mass? Well, it's there that so there are 82.66% carbon. If we have 100 grams of butane, keep things simple, this is percent, right? If we have 100 grams of butane, well, 82 gram, about 82 grams is carbon and the rest are hydrogen. That's the gram. We already have grams. Super simple there. Because percent, you can take a thousand butane and you're going to get 826.6 gram of carbon. Same thing. It's still 82.66%. All right. Okay. Grams converted. So we have grams right now convert to mole, right? And then plug into that equation. That's it. Uh, grams to mole, use molecular weight or molar mass, right? And you're going to get that mole of carbon. Same thing with hydrogen, uh, hydrogen atom. So uh, divided by uh, molecular weight, you're going to get that mole of hydrogen. Plug these two in the molecular formula. So you should get C, uh, 6.88259 and hydrogen 17.34. But you guys know that uh, the, in the molecular formula, the mole, the subscription has to be a whole number, right? You can't have like a fraction of carbon or the fraction of hydrogen in the molecule. That doesn't make any sense, right? So in this case, we're going to... So it's a little math right here. We, we're going to make this number easier by the divided by the lowest number, which is 6.88259 Keep the whole thing. Don't write them up. Don't write them up yet. Don't write them up. We write off at the end. Um, 
do this you should get c1 s2.519 blah 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 okay well still not the lowest number what do we do i'm going to times two make it that's the lowest whole number about c2 s5 that's the empirical formula yeah <clears throat> All right, so we get an empirical formula now, which is the lowest uh, multiple of the molecular formula. Uh, a little bit about empirical formula, if you uh, didn't really get from the lecture. So the empirical formula uh, is the lowest multiple of the molecular formula. Let's say I take a compound that uh, has a molecular formula of C8, C8H16. That is the molecular formula. The empirical formula is just that, CH2. It's the lowest multiple. You can divide it by eight. You get C1H2 right there. All right. To convert an, an uh, empirical formula to its molecular formula, you going you are going to need that multiple. You need to know this multiple, and you times it. You're going to get the two uh, molecular formula. But how do you know the multiple though? Well, you are going to need the molecular uh, the uh, molecular weight or molar mass of the whole compound. Let me show you, all right? So C2H5, if you do the math right here, the uh, molar mass or molecular weight of C2H5 is all, only 29.07 grams per mole. But the whole molecule, if you look at the, the question, the whole molecule, butane has a molecular weight of 58.12 grams per mole. That's, you can calculate the, uh, the multiple right here. So 58.12 divided by 29.07, so two times which means that C2H5 is the empirical formula. The molecular formula is times two, C4H10. That's it, that's, that's a built-in. You will see quite a lot of this, uh, these guys um, in uh, organic chemistry one. We, we have quite a lot of built-in show up, okay? All right, do on your own. Let's see if you can do it, okay? And once you're done, go with me. So lycopene. Um, so we have this present conversation. Let's say 100, 100 grams of lycopene. Also, oh, let's say if we have 100 grams of lycopene, okay, uh, 89.49 grams, that's the carbon, the rest are hydrogen, right? Now, so we have grams now, so we have mass of carbon, mass of hydrogen, so convert to moles, convert to moles. Uh, use mo uh, molecular weight, divided by molecular weight, you get two moles. Okay, unit cancel out. Um, same thing with hydrogen gas, so the molecular weight is 1.01 grams, so do the math there, you should get that moles of hydrogen. And the, mo uh, the, molecule, the formula of lycopene should be something like this, right? Look, weird, look really weird, but don't worry, we will make it easier, divided by the lowest number, right? which is the, carb uh, the moles of carbon, the lowest number, let's say, look a little bit better, right? but still not the lowest whole number, try to get to the closest whole uh, the closest and lowest whole number, I'm going to times times two, not gonna work, you're gonna get 2.7 or three, yeah, 3.7, that's not gonna work. Uh, let's times three, three and four, really close there, all right? Let's assume uh, the empirical formula is C3H4. All right, what about, uh, how do you calculate the, or determine the molecular formula? Well, we use the mo uh, mo uh, molecular weight. C3H4, the molecular weight is 40.07 grams. So we have three carbon, right, times 12.01, and hydrogen is 1.01 each times four, and combine them, you get 40.07 grams per mole. Um, the, the whole lycopene is 536.88. It's a massive molecule. Yeah? <clears throat> now, what's the multiple? We take 836.88, oh, sorry, 536.88 uh, divided by 40.07. The multiple is 13.39855253. Keep the whole thing, don't, don't round them off yet. When, every time when you round off the number, you add uncertainty to the number. Don't do that, we do that one time at the end. Just keep the whole thing. You have the calculator, it's fine. Um, all right, so that's a multiple. So take 13.39855253 times three times four, you should get to the molecular formula look like that. And the lycopene, you can look up uh, from, uh, from Google. The molecular formula of lycopene is C40H56. There we go. Okay. One more. <clears throat> all right. Hydrate of inorganic salt, right? Uh, a lot of a lot of not all but a lot of uh inorganic compound like sodium chloride magnesium carbonate or those like uh, cation and anion um they can absorb water yeah leave it uh, in the in the atmosphere water in the in the air can get into the uh, lattice structure 
right? Uh, but if you talk about the uh, in, in, uh, inorganic salt with a transition metal, it, let's say the transition metal in it, and you guys know the transition metal, they show different color. They have the different, uh, can have multiple um, oxidation number, and all of them have like very colorful, okay? So the anhydrous mean dry, no water. Anhydrous cobalt 2 chloride uh, is blue, look like a powder, blue powder. But when it got hexahydrate, so six molecules of water bond to uh, uh, the cobalt, it turned kind of red, uh, red-ish. Yeah. Um, in the lab, you're going to work with copper sulfate. The copper sulfate, um, anhydrous copper sulfate, which look like a white powder, yeah, nothing. But if you add water or if it get uh, if it absorbed water, uh, it turned uh, blue, look like this, take a look. All right, white uh, copper sulfate, anhydrous copper sulfate. Add water, drop of water in it, it turns to blue. It's pretty cool, okay? And if you look at the structure, this all lattice structure, look at just right here. Uh, cobalt in the middle, this is sulfate, this is sulfate. Water molecules can um, uh, form a weak bond with copper, okay? Um, some of you might be familiar with the Ipsum salt, which is uh, used to reduce the inflammation or the, uh, when you apply to the skin, all right? So if we, uh, if some salt is actually very simple, magnesium sulfate heptahydrate, which means seven, mole uh, seven molecules of water in it. In the lab, you have to be able to calculate um, uh, the formula of hydrate salt doing like this. I'll take a look here. A sample of, of hydrate copper to sulfate, so we don't know how much water in there, uh, is weighed and heated overnight in an oven before heating so this guy weighed uh 4.98 grams right after heating 3.18 well makes sense water is gone right water got driven up so that's why it's the uh, anhydrous salt is uh lighter in weight right so what's the mass of water well according to the uh, uh the law of conservation of mass the rest gonna be mass right we have them uh, there's water in here after heating, water is gone. The mass difference, that's going to be water. All right, take 4.98 minus uh, 3.18. The mass of water is 1.80 grams. All right, how do we find the formula of hydrate salt? We need to find N, all right? One more copper. How many moles of hydrogen are in it? We're going to need the moles of uh, copper sulfate and then moles of water. How do we, how do we find moles of uh, copper sulfate and moles of water? Well, we have grams right here. We have grams. See that? Well, convert grams to mole. You can do it, I'm sure. All right, take um, grams and then use molecular weight. That's the moles of water, copper sulfate. All right, you have to calculate the molecular weight a little here. Uh, moles of water, so take 1.8 grams of water. And each water molecule is 18.02 grams per mole. All right, that's a molecular weight of water. And you're going to get this number. All right, so which means that... <clears throat> This mole of copper sulfate has that mole of water. All right, try to make it to one. So divided by the lowest number, same thing. We did it many times now. You get one mole of copper sulfate is five moles of water, which means that it's about five, right? So the molecular formula of copper sulfate with water is copper two sulfate pentahydrate. Here we go. Okay. All right. Um. And all right, so it's been a while. I know. Uh, let's um, hold on one second. Okay, all right, here we go. All right, let's go to the next video. Okay, and uh, let's see. Oh, I have a guest today. Let's see who that is. All right, I'll see you on the next. Video.